Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. The topic of today's video is Significant Figures or Sig Figs Part 2. This video is meant to be watched after you've watched Part 1, which deals with the topic of just what are Sig Figs and how do we count the number of Sig Figs in any given measured number. Uh, today what we're going to talk about is once you know how to count the number of Sig Figs in a number and once you're comfortable with the concept, what do you do with these numbers? So for example, how do you add, subtract, multiply, and divide with them? Uh, lucky for you, what you do when you're adding and subtracting is the same thing. You follow the same rules for this, and what you do when you're multiplying and dividing is also the same rule. So you really only have to learn two things today. Let's get started. Uh, let's start with adding and subtracting. So to begin with, what I'd like you to do is try to imagine that your parents have given you a chore for the summer. They've said, I want you to plant, or not plant, but rather build a fence around the vegetable garden in the backyard. And so you go to the vegetable garden and you take a meter stick and uh, imagine that the vegetable garden looks something like this, you know, a little bit of a rectangle here, and you take your meter stick and, and it's a really old beat up meter stick. Like this meter stick is so beat up that the best you can measure, you can't even measure centimeters on it, the centimeter markings are all worn away. The best you can do is kind of estimate maybe uh, every 10 centimeters, what are, what are you measuring? And so you come up with a number on this side, just for argument's sake, of 6.2 meters. Okay? And you start thinking to yourself, well, if I'm going to be buying fence to, to put around this garden, then I, I better make sure I use a decent meter stick. So now you go out and you buy yourself a brand new meter stick where all of the centimeter markings are nice and easy to read. And you measure this side, it comes to 4.19 meters down to the nearest centimeter, 4.19 meters on this side. And of course you could go back and remeasure this side, but you figure, ah, I've already done it, I've done a good enough job, who cares, you know, I don't even want to be doing this job. So what do you do next? Well, everyone knows that if you're going to build a fence around this, you have to add up all the sides. So you do 6.2 meters, and you add 6.2 meters, and you add 4.19 meters and you add 4.19 meters. Now just uh, bear with me for a sec. What I'm going to do here is actually I just want to erase the the M's for meter because I want to keep this as clean as possible. Uh, of course we always want you to write your units into a calculation when you're solving something but just for today uh, let, allow me to uh, erase those and you'll see why in a second. Now, the 4.19 meter measurements, they are known to the nearest centimeter. The 6.2 meter measurements are known only to the nearest 10 centimeters or tenth of a meter. In other words, because of the measuring device used, you're really not sure what goes in this column. In other words, what you're really dealing with is a 6.2 where that number could be exactly 6.2, it could be a 6.19, it could be a 6.18, it could be a 6.21, and so on. You aren't sure because the ruler you used wasn't very good. So you made an estimate, best guess, 6.2. Because these question marks exist in the centimeter column, when you add these up, what are you going to get as your final answer? Well, you add the two nines here, you get an eight carry the one, right? Adding this grade three style here, that gives us three, two more is five, six, seven. So we have a seven there. And then of course, here we have 20. Well, this is what you're gonna get as the number of meters of fence that you need to go buy to build this fence for your parents around their vegetable garden. However, think about this. Do you think it's fair or reasonable to actually make a purchase of fence based on this last digit here? I mean, after all, it came from adding two known numbers to who knows what was in that column there. As a result, when you're doing sig fig reporting of an added number, you never report the column where there's any question marks, where there's any unknown information. So what are you going to write as your final answer what are you going to say to the people at the lumber yard when you're buying fencing? Are you going to say 20.7? No. The 
7, 8, the 8 here still gets to round the 8 up. So actually, sorry, the, the 8 here gets to round the 7 up. There is still rounding power available here. However, you're going to report this as a 20.8 meters, and that is your final answer. All right? So when you're adding numbers with sig figs, line up the decimals like you did in grade 3. Put any question marks in any columns where the information is not known. Do the regular adding and do the regular rounding. However, don't report any columns where there are question marks. Okay? That's adding. Now, luckily, subtracting follows similar rules. As an example of subtracting, I'd like you to think back to the previous video where we had a bowl of raspberries sitting on top of an electronic balance. And if I remember correctly, this uh, very yummy looking bowl of raspberries, I guess I don't know what color I'll use for raspberries, kind of a, it kind of depends where you get them. Sometimes they're really red, sometimes they're not so red. Like the last bunch that I had, I had to throw away. It's getting to be the end of summer here. But anyway, enough about my raspberries. Let's talk about physics here. Suppose you go back and look in that video. If you remember, the actual number, if I remember correctly, was 235 grams on the scale. Now let's say someone asked you, is that the actual mass of raspberries? Well, you guys are smart. You'd say no, because that includes the bowl. So suppose someone said, well, guess what? I got some information for you. The bowl, I know, has a mass of 79.4 grams. Don't ask me how I know it. I, I measured it some other time. I know that's the case. And now I'm asking you, what is the mass of the raspberries? And you go, oh, well, that's pretty easy stuff. You do 235 and you subtract 79.4. Of course, you remember what you learned in grade 3, where you're supposed to add up, or sorry, line up the columns here. Now, there is no point zero in this number here. That's because of the quality of the scale you're using. However, we can still put, like what we did over here, we're going to put a little question mark after the decimal point here. And now we're going to go ahead and add, or rather subtract. So what are we going to get here? Well, this number comes to 155.6. However, just like here, you're not allowed to report a column that has question marks. Same thing goes for here. You cannot report this last column because the two numbers that went into making it contain some uncertainty, some unknownness. So your final answer is going to be 155. Is that what it's going to be? No. Just like the crossed out number still got to do a little bit of rounding up in this case, because it was an 8, this number here gets to do a little bit of rounding up because it's a 6. So we don't get 155, we get 156 grams as the mass of the raspberries. All right, so very similar styles for adding and subtracting, pretty straightforward. All right, if you have any questions, then uh, you can watch this again because you may have missed a few of the things that I mentioned, or you can ask in class, or you could even do some looking up online to get maybe an alternative explanation. Okay, we're going to keep the pace moving by going on now to multiplying and dividing. So this time, let's start with multiplying. I'd like you to imagine that now your parents have said, oh, um, and by the way, we don't only want you to build a fence around the vegetable garden, we also want you to replant uh, a, a separate garden somewhere else in the yard. And you go, oh, guys, come on, are you serious? And they go, yep, it's the summer, you're off, you can do some work around the yard. So here's our other plot of land that we're going to do some planting for. And this time, because you're planting, planting involves covering a whole area with, you know, soil and seeds and all that. So this time you're not going to be calculating a perimeter the way you did in the fence example. You're going to be calculating an area. And suppose, just for argument's sake, you were using that crappy ruler again that only measures very well up until about the nearest uh, 10 centimeters. And suppose these are the numbers you have for this particular area of land. Okay? Now this is a rectangle. 
So hey, no problem, area equals length times width. You're going to do 4.3 times 6.5. And that number, if you run it through your calculator, comes out to 27.3. Okay. Oh, actually, sorry, I apologize. I just realized I made a little mistake. Uh, I wanted this number here to be a 6.2. And I'll, you might see why in a minute. It's because sometimes as teachers, what we do is we, um, we rig up our questions so that they lead to a certain result because we want to show you something. So I apologize there. It doesn't really matter too much from your point of view. I did want this to be a 4.2 meters and that to be a 4.2 meters. So I apologize. I'm just going to do a little more erasing down here. This should be a 2 there. And we're done. We go back. 4.2. Okay, now if you multiply these, uh, I checked earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, they come to 27.3 meters squared. Now, what do you do this time? You notice I didn't line up the decimals like I did with adding and subtracting, and that's because multiplying is a much easier rule than adding and subtracting. Here we use what's called the weakest link rule. And the weakest link rule says the following. If you're multiplying two or more numbers, then your final answer can only be as strong as the weakest member of the multiplication. So for example, this is a two sig fig number here, and this is a two sig fig number here. They're both two sig figs, so they're both equally weak. My final answer cannot contain three sig figs. The thinking goes something like this. How could you end up with more precision, three sig figs, than the individual ingredients you started with? It's kind of like, imagine if you were in, in a, in a game, you're playing a game like a, a team sport. Isn't it kind of true to some extent that the team is only as strong as its weakest player? In other words, a weak player holds back the team if that weaker player were replaced with a stronger player, the team would do better. Okay? The only way to do well if you have really weak players is just to not play them. Otherwise, they're going to hold you back at some point. Well, the same thing goes with multiplying. You look to the number of sig figs in the numbers that went into the calculation, and you go with the weakest link. In this case, they're both two sig figs, so your final answer can only have two sig figs. Rounding rules apply, so this is going to become a 27 square meters as a final answer. In this case I rounded down because the 3 doesn't round the 7 up, it just goes back to 7 over here. 27 square meters is the area. Okay, Let's take a quick look at dividing and see what happens. This time let's think of an example of, with dividing that you'd be familiar with. Suppose um, it's grade 9 again, grade 9 science, and I give you a rock and I tell you to find the density of this rock. Do you remember finding density? Whoops, sorry, I'm having some... As those of you who have been watching know, this happens every once in a while. I end up doing something. I have no idea why this happens, but I end up zooming crazily in and out. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Back to the topic at hand. We're calculating density, and if you recall, density we learned in grade 9 is mass divided by volume. And if you remember, what you did was you took the rock and you put it on a scale and you measured its mass. Let's suppose its mass is something like 33.2 grams. And then there are a number of ways you might measure the volume. If you remember with an irregular shaped object, what you do is you dump it in into what's called an overflow can that's full of water. And the water that spills out through a little spout, you catch that into a graduated cylinder, and that's how you get the displaced volume of the rock. But anyway, getting back to this, let's imagine that the rock had a volume of 12.85 cubic centimeters. And now you're going to go about calculating the volume, or the density rather, so we write density equals the mass, 33.2. I'm leaving out the units now because I just want to focus on the sig figs and you get this. Now if you run that through your calculator, the number comes out to something like 2.5876 and perhaps more. I don't have the number 
on my calculator in front of me. I did the calculation earlier. Uh, this would be grams per cubic centimeter. So grams per cubic centimeter. But remember, we're not so concerned with the units. We want to focus on how many sig figs in the final answer. Well, once again, we use the weakest link rule. The thought in dividing is the same as in multiplying. Your final answer can never be more precise than the least precise number of the ingredients that went into calculating it. Just like thinking about that team again. You're never going to have a very strong team if you have weak players. So looking at this number here, we see there are three sig figs. And over here, we see there are four sig figs. Clearly, the weakest link is the three sig fig number. And therefore, the final answer can only contain three sig figs. That's going to be a two decimal something something. However, if we look at the ending numbers, even though we're not going to include those, they still get to influence the final answer in terms of rounding. Because this is higher than, or this is a five or higher, it's a seven, we are going to round the 2.58 up to 2.59. That'll be grams per cubic centimeter. And voila, you have yourself a correctly sig figged answer. All right. So, to recap, multiplying and dividing, easy. Use the weakest link rule. Look at all of the numbers that went into the multiplication or the division, or if you did a little bit of both, then look at all of them at once. Find the number with the least number of sig figs. Make sure your final answer contains that many sig figs only. Of course, do consider rounding before you do sig fig your final answer. And then, just recapping with or adding and subtracting, just like in grade three, line up the decimals like you used to, okay? Do your adding and subtracting, do your rounding, sure. However, don't report any column where there was a question mark. In other words, where there was at even one number in the adding or subtracting where that column was not known due to lack of sig figs, lack of precision. Okay, folks, and that's all there is to it. Uh, there is some practice for you to try in uh, your course pack and if you want even more practice go online there's tons of practice just type in adding subtracting multiplying and dividing with sig figs I'm sure you'll find online examples uh, that's it for today hope that wasn't too long thanks for watching and I'll see you next time all right now take care